Now we're going to focus our discussion on how do we evaluate this convolution integral. So here's a process. Let's say we have an input x of t using this as an example and our corresponding impulse response is given as follows. We're going to evaluate this integral, this convolution integral right here. Here's our input and here's our impulse response. We'll start off with replacing h of t with h of tau. So this is part of the function right here. We're going to try to figure out what the shape looks like graphically. And this is what h of minus tau looks like. So our minus tau is right here. And just like what we did with the convolution sum, we're going to just shift this as far at left as possible. So now that we have minus 4 right here, we now have a t minus 4. And where there's a 0 here, we have now a t. Okay, because we shifted far to the left of possible. Now we have an expression or graphical drawing of h of t minus tau. Okay, and we're going to convolve this. This is a symbol for convolution and this is our input shown here and now we're going to evaluate we're going to multiply and integrate so we already did our reflection and shift and now we're going to multiply and integrate where there's a common area when we finish multiplying these two functions right here so we're ready to start a discussion here's our input x sub t. We're going to just leave this fix and then we're going to shift this function h of t minus tau. Notice our limit. This will help us define our limits where when we multiply these two functions we can see that this function t is our sort of like our upper limit with respect to tau. So we multiply and integrate and we could see here that we multiply these two heights one at for x of t two and h of t minus tau has a height of one. So two times one and we're gonna just find we multiply these two and then we're gonna integrate the area that's common between them. So here we can see the integration of limits goes from zero to t. Okay? And that's described by this uh inequalities set of inequalities here. So after we're evaluating this and finding the area, we see that it's just 2t. Now plotting this function from 0 to t, I mean uh, 0 to t, we could see that this evaluation is valid up to and less than equal to 2. And then the function when we multiply changes. So that's our first part from 0 to 2. That's what our t looks like. Okay. Now we shift this again. Here we see our t and tau where it's shifted, t minus 4 and t right here. We're going to evaluate this integral convolution integral for this case and this we could see it's valid when t minus 4 is less than 0 t minus 4 is less than 0 here and here and that t is greater than 2 okay and in other words this function of t for our y of output would be valid from 2 to 4 so our area for this is going to be constant for this time limit between t and 4, or in other words, from tau 0 to 2. So our area is just 4. So between 2 and 4, our area is constant, right, as shown here. And then finally, our expression, when we shift this again to the left, here's our lower limit, t minus 4. To 2. And we can see that the area starts to decrease. 
Okay, we're going to again multiply and integrate 2 times 1, and then our lower limit is t minus 4, and our upper limit is 2. And as we shift this h of t minus tau to the right, this area that's common to them will be getting close, will decrease and go to 0. So t minus 4 less than tau less than 2. So that's what our tau here. Okay, when we integrate that, that implies that t is less than 6 for this case. And then we can see that uh, integrating for this case from 2 to t minus 4, evaluating this would be minus 2t plus 12. Okay, and this is what we get here. So if you substitute 6, substituting 6 here, that leaves 0. We substitute it, let's say, right here at 4. 4 times 2 is negative, minus 2 times 4 is negative 8, plus 12 is equal to 4. So those are two points, and we see that this is a linear line. So that's the procedure and how we evaluate the convolution integral.